live. Don't right. get you in it. Cool. All right, so everybody, so who didn't get introduced? Rick, this is Sean, that's Roger. Dane. I didn't want to be in it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, uh, how does it, it needs to go? up and down. Oh, there. There we go. There, go. Um, there we go. So that's Rick, this is Sean, this is Dane. Pleasure. Dane took this class, how long ago? A year? Two years. Two years ago, so. Uh, and, and I was your third. No, just kidding. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, who else didn't? Oh, Brian. This is Sean. Pleasure. And, Dave, and you, everyone else got introduced, yeah. so there cool, you go. Cool. And he's going to show us his rig. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is the cart, uh, cart camera rig. And it's basically five, six foot uh, carbon fiber poles. Um, they're mounted to the car using the black rubber suction cups. Um, then you have a basic kit. Uh, you have different size kits and that they're all based on length and the kind of gear you're looking to mount to your, I mean, you can do stills, you can do motion. So a big part of this um, is kind of all of your accessories and putting it together. Again, like the thing to keep in mind when I'm doing this and showing you guys is that when you're doing, most of the time that I have used this thing, it's usually on like an indie car on a racetrack. So usually when I do these shoots, it's for, you know, it's for a magazine. And I literally have between eight to 10 minutes on the track. And the only time I have to set up the shot is when they're literally breaking down the car to put on the dummy, uh, uh, I would say vehicle equipment to be able to transport the actual vehicle to the track and they tow it out. And I literally have to kind of pre-set up my camera angle. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll bring in my camera and I'll set up kind of what I'm looking for with uh, the angle, <coughs> what the track is like. And usually beforehand, I'll go on Google Earth, I'll look up the racetrack, you know, I'll look up the, the press photos from events that have happened. You know, like, I think the, yeah, it's the uh, uh, Texas Motor Speedway, I believe it was where I had shot with, you know, the last uh, IndyCar. And so I'll look at kind of what the best angles are, the best turns, and kind of what I have access to, and what I'll be able to get done within eight to 12 minutes. Because usually they just give me the time that they're doing the track walk. Normally before a race, the racers go on the track and actually walk the track to get to know the turns, see if there's anything that they want to notice for, you know, for keeping memory for when they're racing. And so basically during that time is the only time I have to do these rig shots. Now with rig shots, you're going to be using ND filters. And the idea behind the rig shots is that once you get the camera set up at the angle you want to be at, you're basically going to be moving the car very, very, very slowly for about anywhere from five to 20 seconds to be able to get that motion blur in the shot. And you want to be very still. And the idea behind being still is that the car ends up being you know, sharpened in focus. And when I use this, this thing on shoots, uh, on location, normally what I'll do is I'll set the rig up and then based on where we are on the track and where the sun is, I'll kind of get my background hero shot with the action on the speedway. And then I'll basically kind of get the car set up for the light. And then I'll actually just do kind of really slow moving 360 shots where I've got the, the steering wheel cranked really hard. And I'm just slowly moving the car to get the sun to light each quarter panel on the vehicle. And then I'll composite all that together. Now, so on top of getting the shot that you want, normally I have an assistant with me, like when I'm doing the racetrack stuff, behind me shooting the racetrack so that way uh, I get all the pieces I need in order to be able to drop that into the best background that I want because most of the time I don't have the right amount of pieces or I'm you know if something happens like I've had batteries go bad in the middle of shooting and the the mount is actually stuck to the bottom and you can't get so I had to take the camera off so I lose the hero shot that I had just had so I basically starting over from scratch putting a new battery in and then kind of doing everything you know from scratch again so I'll shoot those background pieces and then once I'm done I'll take the rig off and kind of do a few quick shots without the rig on it so then I can kind of keep an idea of what was in the spot of where the rig was when I did do the shots. Uh, for the IndyCar stuff that's extremely important because a lot of times you're dealing with logos and branding and all that other stuff so some of the stuff I can't even see. Um, and then for, for the most part with cars like this or just cars in general I really just end up airbrushing out most of the stuff and I have a lot of uh, YouTube videos on my channel about how to about rig removal and getting rid of you know that whole thing because oftentimes you, you see the rig on the car and you're like what's the point of doing this if if you're going to spend three hours just trying to remove a third of the image from the shot because it's holding the camera so I want to have you stand there so 
So basically, when I'm setting this up, I'll kind of get the camera angle that I want in relationship to the vehicle. And the things I keep in mind are the things that actually make the shot look like it's in motion. I want wheel spin. I don't want to see the front facing edge of the tire. Like if I were on that side, you see how you, the wheels turn, you're standing on the inside. You want lines to kind of contour if you are in a turn. You want lines, you usually want to be on turn because it'll give you the most motion in the background. But it'll also, once you follow the turn, be able to see kind of, uh, you get more dramatic. There's more drama in the shot. If you can see a curve that the, that the, <coughs> the car is actually taking as opposed to just a straight line where you can't really tell that it's in motion. So when you're, when all the lines are kind of converging throughout the square of the frame, then you get like this more intense kind of drama with the image, which is the whole point of doing a rig shot at the end. So I'll figure out where I'm gonna, you know, my camera's gonna be in relation to the vehicle. And usually you're shooting pretty wide to be able to have enough information, one, to be able to crop, and two, just because it looks more intense when it's super wide. So I'll figure out where I want my camera to be in relationship. So I'm kind of splitting the difference between the side and the front of the vehicle. I'll kind of zoom in a little bit. And then once I kind of get my shot, I'll usually set the camera down in relationship to the vehicle because this is where I want to line up my rigging. So first I'll start out with putting the um, suction cups on top of the vehicle. And usually I just kind of get a few on there to get kind of get loose to figure out where I want to be. And I'm constantly, when I am, mounting it, I'll line it up exactly with where the camera angle is going to be. So you have a bracket that comes with uh, the kit that goes on the camera and then a, there's a little bit of a, an elbow. So you got basically like about a foot from the arm of where you're going to be. So you want to kind of keep that in mind when you're, when you're building this out. And also there's flex in, in the carbon fiber. So I have to also keep in mind that once I have all this stuff mounted, it's going to fall a little bit. Now it's pretty windy right now, and then also when you're on sheet metal, if you can see the top of the car and how it wiggles. So you gotta keep that in mind too. So it, there's wind, there's all these things working against you when you gotta be dead fucking still for, you know, 20, 15, 30 seconds. So it comes with this uh, triangulation kit where basically you're running rope um, at, at, at three different angles and that it tightens up in relation to the back and both ends of it, so it kind of keeps it extremely taut. So that way where your camera is mounted in relation to the vehicle, it's about as sturdy as you can get it. And then the rest you kind of just let the inertia, kind of, you don't want to move too fast, you don't want to move too slow. So just kind of, and then you just kind of get as many shots as you possibly can. So we'll kind of, we won't be doing like 20, 30 second exposures. I have some NDs that, you know, aren't as heavy, so we'll kind of be able to get away with, I think like five or eight, hopefully. Yeah. So after I, once I get my first base set up, I'll then start adding to and these just kind of slide on. The thing you have to keep in mind too is that when you're doing this, is that these are hot right now, so there's a lot of flex in them. So what happens is you can put them on hot, and then it gets cold, and the next thing you know, this thing's shrunk on there and you're by yourself trying to get these things off. And it's a bit of a nightmare, especially when you have an entire race team telling you to hurry the F up because they gotta go. So as I'm putting this on, I just kind of constantly keep in mind of where the camera is in relationship. And I don't really worry about too much of what's behind the actual vehicle. Normally, when I'm doing this type of stuff, Sign position is a really big part of it. You usually want it off in that direction or off in that direction Basically because now when I'm shooting for the most part with the 45 degree angle of the Sun It's gonna flare right into my lens. So I'm gonna have to then when I shoot multiple exposures then Use the different exposures to then Photoshop out the highlights and then blast it out the camera And when I do uh, usually do the on the camera I'm running an ND filter and uh, and a polarizer and it gets kind of tricky because once you have all that, all that yeah. glass on there trying to see what you're doing while you're doing it so a lot of it's getting everything pre-sorted out before you're actually doing it 
you guys have any questions about how this is done so far? This, this is the talking. class that never asks questions. Never asks questions. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> so they're not me. So they're not you, no. <laughs> Mr. Questions. Oh, there you are. <laughs> What's up? What do you do? Good to see you, brother. You have a big class. So there's times too, like, you know, I'm sure you guys know, like, with photography, you constantly have to be on your foot, on your toes. Shit always changes. Like, I literally got flowing when they were launching the, uh, the 86 uh, TRD edition. They flew me to Germany to go shoot this thing. We get there, and car prep has the car, and they unload it. It's literally after, like, I don't know, it was like a 16-hour, 18-hour flight. Get off. We're there. They pull the car out, and it's supposed to have these white strips on it. So, by the way, these images are also due in three days. So I'm there, I'm literally staying there to retouch and then fly back so they can have the stuff as soon as possible. They pull the car out and there's literally, there's no stripes on it. And I could see the client being like, oh crap, that's an issue. But then he also knew that I could do the stuff on the spot. So I didn't have to worry about not being able to, not have the, not have the stripes and being able to Photoshop them on afterward. But the other issue was that they just painted the car three days beforehand. And you need a six week cure where you can suction cup anything. So I couldn't mount anything. I was there to do six rig shots. Yep. I couldn't mount to anything on the vehicle. I could only do winch, uh, the glass. And with the glass and flexing and vibrations, it constantly wants to shatter or crack on you. So, and I couldn't break the glass because it was a one of a kind vehicle. And what so happened? Uh, <laughs> what was that? And what happened? I mean, you get the job done. You do what you have to do. That's literally, it's about being, it's about problems. I swear to God, I feel like all the improv classes I took, I took when I was acting in junior college, kind of helped, helped me get through photography in the later part of my life. I mean, it's funny, because like, you can have all this equipment in the world, but if like, if I don't have the clip for the camera to get to this thing, all of this is worthless. Like, I literally can't do anything. So at that point, it's like, well, what are you doing then? Well, then I gotta spend the 2,500 bucks to buy a virtual rig. I'll shoot statics of the vehicle, you know. I'll shoot the background by itself. I gotta jack up the car and then spin the wheels, shoot exposures of that. That's how we used to do it, actually. <laughs> we used to sit there and do the fishing line, round the tire, pull yeah. the tire on the 8x10, and then do the, do the then we had to move the camera actually to get a blur. Wow. Oh, it was a pain in the ass. Yeah, that makes sense because you're on film. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. So, yeah. Oh. Well, not for a rig shot. No, not for a rig shot. For some kind of motion. Yeah, for a motion, for creating a motion shot. That's crazy. Trust me. Pain in the ass. It's funny because I went here for photography. The car thing was kind of an accident. I actually started, I, I uh, my dad lost his job when I was in my sixth semester. And we had just started doing some digital, but we weren't like allowed to do it for class. I have a choice, I didn't have any living expense money. So I shot Nikon Coolpix, shot a Nikon Coolpix, and started Photoshopping the images to put in little lens issues, like stuff <laughs> out of focus, adding grain, <laughs> putting foreground objects out of focus to make it look like I had shot the stuff and I made it through the entire turn without getting caught. <laughs> Don't try this. Don't try your sneaky little stuff. There's only, if you're going to break the rules, make yeah. sure you don't get caught. Yeah. If you're going to break it, break it big. Or as Ken Margiano always used to say, break them right. If it's or not like that, uh, yeah, what, it. How do hold the power button. Let's see. Stand it upright, hold the power button, turn it off, and then turn it back on. Okay, trying that, let's see, and it's kind of coming back. Hold it up straight, there you go. Okay, there we go. But yeah, I, I basically started retouching for, I'm actually gonna have one of you guys hold the other end of this, because of the, yeah, just hold it like this, so it doesn't fall. So I'm gonna slide this down the rails, because don't want to run into the bush. But I actually started uh, 
retouching uh, for different photographers. I started out with Jill Greenberg as her composite artist. Oh yeah. And then uh, went sure. on to do <coughs> automotive for. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back a little bit. Keep going. Keep going hey, Yeah, I started out as a composite artist, just doing retouching and then full-on uh, composite uh, car photography. I started doing all of like car and driver, oh, yeah. driver's covers, a lot of stuff for MPH. And I got to the point where a lot of the stuff I was doing was kind of based on this like, can you save this uh, type of concept. Can you save my career? <laughs> like, we shot this, we had... You know, they, they give all the excuses I give now, you know, like, yeah, right. we had five minutes, we didn't get the shot, this happened, it didn't work out. Uh, all we have are the the images on the of the vehicle on the floor of the Detroit Auto Show. Can you, can you put them in a background, add motion and rain, and uh, put them on the streets of Detroit? Sure. sure. No problem. So that's how, to, how that whole thing kind of started. That's not a that's what I'm thinking too. I struggle so much with the retouching. I like retouching, but the compositing, the layers of that is, is a lot. Yeah. Adding background is like the hardest thing. Yeah, well, you're getting cars, to look right. In other stuff, it feels simple. But in car, you're the master interior light with the exterior light, and it kills you. Yep. Yep. Basically, I got to the point where I was doing everything but the car, and I was like, <laughs> I might as well just. And the whole reason why I wasn't shooting was because I didn't want to buy all that gear and carry all that shit around, and here I am. Trust me, yes. I got in this business because I didn't want to sit behind a desk. What do I do most of the time now? Sitting <laughs> fucking yeah, what's with you guys and not uh, wanting to shoot geez. cars? I know, it's funny, you had mentioned sh shooting studio, you know. Oh, yeah, that that's, was... that's the epitome of like being a photographer behind a desk. Yeah, right? that was awful. Uh, it's the curse of being good at something that you don't want to do, and then they just keep hiring you for it. <laughs> that's the other thing, like, and that's probably the one thing I've, I've learned the most out of doing all this stuff. Is, People respect you just as much for what you won't do as yep. for what you will do. Yep. Oh yeah. And it's kind of everything. So you got to set your limit as to what you'll do and stick to it. Yeah. And people usually respect that. Usually, and if they don't, then you don't want to work yeah, with them anyway. Oh no, or, or you just charge a hell of a lot of money and then you, you go okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, I'm kind of known as the expensive guy, so I oh, miss yeah. out on a lot of stuff. But at the same time, it's like That's fine. There's other photographers that I commute where they've gotten stuff, and I've kind of been like. I don't know that killing myself for 10 days for a rate that I would've gotten for two days wouldn't really be worth it. Yeah. Not, not worth it at all. So, kind of getting this taut a little bit. And the idea is to kind of get a lot of the shake out of there once we triangulate this thing. We'll be able to uh, get most of the shake out of it. And then before I mount the camera, I usually double check everything. The last thing you need is to get all your expensive gear together.
there's no extra pay because you're getting paid for a travel day and we're traveling that day so that's the deal right and you're thinking man that sucks karma has a way of getting to you so we're all ready to go everybody's lined up the stunt driver the power shooting has got a rig mounted to the underneath it and it's got two medium format cameras on it oh so he can get as many shots as he can out of this one thing it's like all right guys let's go let's do this the follow car gets in the one with the other cameras mounted to it because there's another chase car that we're shooting runs right into the hero car knocks both cameras off the arm the day is done <laughs> that literally probably cost that dude i don't know 60 grand yeah. between no, more than that like 100 and something yeah. in insurance yeah. so like it'll come back to you if you're ever trying to save money you're gonna pay for it somewhere else telling Dan about this other job where I kind of cheaped out and got an intern on something. Oh yeah. That's and they ended up, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing this tennis thing. I'm like, man, you know, I don't want to spend all this money on this guy. You know, I, I'm doing this kind of as a favor. Like I'd rather just cash and get an intern, right? But I really don't need a second person. I see someone to hold my stuff and pretend to get B-roll, right? Dude broke about $1,600. Like what I would have had to pay him, what I would have had to pay a real assistant is what he broke in gear. So, it'll always come back to you. <laughs> right, Dan? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm going to text a certain someone about that <laughs> right after this. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking. Oh, because you know Because I know the person who oh, linked okay, you up okay. with that person, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I'm not going to name any names. But you got to be careful with who you're recommending, too, because when you recommend someone they are a little bit account or you're a little accountable for what they do a little bit a lot of we it represent them yeah, yeah. we talked about this yeah way faster than I would have thought. The retouching, it, it all kind of depends. I mean, I would say you're probably looking at like a solid three hours. Uh, <laughs> the 10 minutes to set it up, three hours to get up. Well, I mean, 10 minutes to get the, get the rig up, but to shoot it, you're, I mean, if you're doing 30 second shots, it can take you a long time. Yeah, especially when you're shooting brackets. I mean, for me, the, the retouching is kind of the easier part. For this stuff, so I don't I don't sweat like having to do this stuff or take it out. I mean, it can be a lot of work, but it's not gonna make or break everything. Is that what Look it up. Yeah, go ahead and run this. Thing. Yeah. That was a little bit of work. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even notice that until you said it. Like, Ooh, good point. <laughs> Keep it close. It'll actually give us It's going on Twitch. <laughs> Hi, Twitch Hi. people. It's good to be behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I should try and go like two thirds up. How are you doing, Rick? Long time no see, bro. I don't know. It's like feeling the, the term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm doing pretty good. I'm graduating this term. Oh, congrats, dude. I gotta come. Because there's a, let's see. There's definitely a couple people I know that are graduating this term. You, Hunter, Hunter Max, and Pierce. And Pierce. Oh, oh. shit. All right. No mic? Yeah. Cool. That's about where we want to be at. God damn it. Uh, we well, we have like five did you people. Guys shoot the Nessus Cam Ranger? Graduating. Oh, oh, like, oh, oh, Cam Ranger. Oh, you're chill. Can you guys oh, see Cam Ranger? Cool, though, because you get to graduate oh, in person, right? And you get to have a grad wall. Yeah. So I've been using that. Good. Good. It's a tiny, tiny little, like little, 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 little area. area. I didn't even get that, but I got to graduate in person. Out. That, was, that was good. Um, it's a great way to wirelessly get, like, I'll go, sometimes I'll, you know, for like editorial stuff. I don't want to say this for you, but 
uh, you know, I'll have a car for a few days. I can go up somewhere where I want to do a rig shot and not have anybody help me. I can set this thing up and I'll show you guys how to do it with the cam ranger. And I control the camera while sitting inside the car. And I'm just rolling the car back as I'm taking shots with the cam ranger. So it's possible to do this by yourself. Oh, you know what? I almost broke my own rule. I didn't double check everything before I mounted the camera. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing this with you one time and for real. This is so much work though. Dude, it looks horrible. <laughs> I've never actually done a real rig shot. Because of that reason. Do you do them very often? No. I didn't think so. Especially if you're the CGI master. I feel like they would rather hire you to just do it. You were speaking on IndyCar. Are you going to Long Beach this weekend? I know. Uh, you know, actually, I'm meeting up with an engineer, but that's it. Uh, normally, normally in the past, I would have. Um, are you going? Yeah. It's actually a cool opportunity to shoot a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I went last year. Without having to, you know, you know, needing all that access. You can get pretty close to the vehicles, which is also yeah. great. The back of all the passes look the same. So if you flip the pass around and keep quiet, you yeah. can't get anywhere. So I'm trying to get this thing set up here. You heard it on Twitch first. All right, so I've gotten this tightened up. So there's there's several, th with this there's a process and an order in which I need to do things that way. Because once I get the camera set up to where I, I, I have it focused, and what I usually do is just because my vision isn't that great, and it's hard to see on this tiny screen, I'll use the autofocus just where there's the most contrast, so I have right here on the car. So I'll put the autofocus on the car there. Normally if I'm tethered with a Digitech, I can have him sit there and double check it until it's good to go. So I'll kind of click on the autofocus a few times to get it set up. And then I go manual, and I'm not touching this thing. Now, the next part's basically, I gotta put on an ND, and a polarizer with a step up because because we are wide if I don't have the step ring on top a third of the image is completely dark from the the, the vignette from the actual filters themselves because I'm using two filters so here we got the step up ring the 72 to 77 I'm trying to see here so that's pretty dark this should give us about probably I would say eight to 12 seconds at like 120, 160 ISO. I usually stick with the 160, 320, 640 ISO steps just for the distribution of grain is the least noticeable at those uh, particular ISO depths. Now, the other tricky thing is because, because once I get these NDs on there, I wanna basically figure out where the polarizer's at where I'm, get, where I'm getting, now what I usually do is I throw it up into the A-pillar to kind of get a nice dark gradient across 
the front windshield and then have fall off on the door. So once I get that set up, it'll look at where the lettering is on the polarizer because I can't, won't be able to see anything through the lens because I'm shooting it several seconds. So I'll get that set up on there. And I don't usually put it on there tight because I don't want to have to jar the camera in order to be able to get it off. So it's on there. Um, this is the angle at which the polarizer was working. So now that I have that set up, I'll plug in my, uh, my camera manager here. Now what the camera manager allows me to do, and I, I use it a lot on jobs, is Yep. Kind of when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, this allows me to show the client what I'm doing wirelessly without having them constantly on over my shoulder, being like, "Did you get it? Did you get it?" Do you like that? <laughs> I mean, it's it's yeah, it's it's hard working with somebody directly over your shoulder constantly. But uh, it, it also allows me to see what I'm I'm doing without having to look at the, <coughs> the camera. And normally, because I didn't feel like risking my expensive gear on a demo, uh, normally I, I work on an R5. This is the Mark IV. So it's a little different set setup, um, but the functionality and the purpose that it serves is basically basically the same. So I just kind of do that to kind of keep it awake a little bit. I'm gonna take this stuff off of uh, the car. I'm ready for a shot here. The camera goes to the iPad. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be able to see and control the camera from the iPad. Yeah. Oh, well, you're in between. <laughs> the other thing I've had happen is I've had my gear in the car. Not that suction comes to everything and then you can't get to anything. And you have to take it all apart again. the Wi-Fi signal on that. Cam Ranger on. So just things to keep in mind. This thing's moving and the car and the car is it's just from the wind. We're dealing with you know long exposure on the That's getting close there. So we'll go. So if I were to open up, it would give me shorter time. If I were to close down, it would give me a long time. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with eight. Hopefully that'll end up being where we wanna be. 
So the challenge is with black cars, exposure, right? You got to really, nothing else in the scene is as dark as the vehicle. So being able to find a happy medium between, you know, if you look at all the information, is all in the shadow areas. So just for, just for the sake of time, I go to say nine, just to see what that looks like. And we're still shooting it at an eight second exposure. information and basically everything. A lot of times I'll have to shoot stuff with, with headlights on, headlights off, DRLs, because the client usually wants options. Um, and then usually what I'll do is kind of get a nice static of the sheet metal just by itself. So I, I guarantee you, for, right off the bat, I know I'm gonna have a sharp vehicle because I'm not moving the car yet. So now I'll start to get into the car. And what's your process like, Sean, like, so to get the rig out, do you have a shot beforehand to... I always do that at the end. Okay. Because the light's going to change and the closest I'll get to it is, is the end is usually the safety. Okay. Because that'll be the closest. I mean, sometimes I'll, you know, like, I, like when I was setting up the shot, I took a few to just kind of get what I need. But in order to be able to have one before and then one after, it kind of covers all my bases. But yeah. at the end of the day, they're usually just for reference. For the most part, I'm going to be airbrushing or retouching out the rig because it's just that much easier rather than using curves and adjustment layers on top of something that's already there to try and kind of match the light because normally i'm going to be so i'm going to be we'll see but basically i'll have an exposure for here i'll have an exposure for here i'll have an exposure for the front and then the windows I'll probably rotate the polarizer to be able to get that clean and you're going to get all these different exposures and then bracketing on top of that so and then i'll want to sandwich all that stuff together a shot that I take at the end without the rig on it isn't really going to match up. No. Like so then you literally just airbrush the rig out yourself just magically. I mean, it's not magically. Well, not ma but time consumingly. Yes. 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 To that point. Time consumingly. That's a good one. Yeah. Same. So big words. So I'm going to take this in the car right now. I'm going to put it in neutral and I'm just going to start rolling back. And once I get the car slowly rolling is when I'll take the actual exposure and then I'll come back out so you guys can see what that looks like. If I were to start the exposure before I started moving, or right when I started moving, I'd have a little movement from the change in speed. And that's the other thing, if you're dealing with brakes that are crap, or, you know, a car that is working really well, because I have to turn the engine off in order to be able to get the vibration out of the hood, so the shot is also sharp. So there's a lot of variables. And the other thing is I also have to stay still because I want the driver to be in focus too. And I got to be looking like I'm looking at the road. So if I'm turning this way, I'm going to be looking over the door, over in that direction in order to be able to get the shot in focus. So I'm just going to kind of see where. Now I'm going to go. So now I have my shot. So 
That was about eight seconds. And I get F9. Which is basically what we're looking at. So you get that. Um, so see, you, you don't want to move the steering wheel because you want to get that highlight on there. Because if, if I move the wheel at all while I'm rolling back, then it, that's out of focus. Luckily, you can't see me as much. Um, you know, I just want to double check my sharpness. That's pretty, pretty sharp. And the only way to double check is I'll go back to the other shot that is static. So these are low res diggers, but that's pretty sharp in relationship to what that looks like. But see, <laughs> once you get moving, how all of these, all of the reflections, dappled light start to smooth out. So I've got light on my hood. This part looks good. This part looks good. I want to figure out now how to light this side, right? So the sun is on that side. So what I'll we'll probably want to do is I'll probably do one or two more at a shorter uh, exposure to be able to get some nice road action. Because I, I like, I mean, the exposure to me looks good. This detail is kind of gone, so I want to go. If I go with a shorter exposure, like, you know, not as long, then I can get a little bit more sharpness out of the objects in the background. But I want to keep the speed in here. So I'll come forward and then again, roll the car back. And then once I've gotten kind of where I want to be with this, then I'll move the car around hard right to get the sign to hit the driver's side of the door. And then I'll have that particular part of the vehicle lit. Can you see that? Yes, sir. It shows? It does. All right, good. We'll go back to the other stuff. By the way, it never works on the first one ever, okay? Just know that. He'll tell you. Yes. This shit doesn't happen this way ever. Never does. I was impressed. I was like, wow, you got that pretty good. I was like, well, once I saw the camera shake, after I took my foot off the brake, I was like, fuck, here we go again. We're going to have to do this a hundred fucking times. I'm going to look. <laughs> now, mind you, most of the time you're doing this, there's a client there looking at what you're doing, being like, does this guy know what he's doing? Exactly. Does he know what he's talking about? Everything you do and say can make you look like an idiot instantly. <laughs> Especially if shit's going on and you're not saying it then, you can look even dumber. Or if you post something you're not supposed to. What, did someone do that? I posted the corner of a mirror. Oh. I taught you better. Yeah. You, Thank you. Slowly come forward. Okay, so I'm going to neutral, I'm killing it. I'm gonna change my exposure to, this is basically for the background, so I'm gonna kinda of cheat. I'm gonna to go to F7 and go to a six second. So now I've got that going. I'm in neutral. I'll kinda of give the car a little bit of a, there we got some of the stickiness out of it. I'm gonna start rolling, I'm shooting. I believe that was the shot. It's close. It's actually a little bright. So I'm going to go with a shorter, a shorter exposure time, probably four seconds, since I am just shooting for the background. I'm going to try it again. Get the car rolling. I'm going to do another one just so I have something. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to start it back up again and try it again, just so I have back. Walkies. All right. Back in neutral, I'm doing about four second exposures. So I'm gonna start rolling again.
Shooting again. I actually like that one. Here, I'm gonna... some of the exposures. You can tell, you can see the difference between I've stopped halfway through this, so you get hard lines on stuff that should be completely smooth like that. So you see the difference where I stopped kind of in the middle. This one isn't as fast. Looks like I may have just not been rolling fast enough. This one's pretty close and I get this clean line here. This one's even better. So I got the shadow exactly where I want it, not touching the vehicle. It's kind of squared up the framing on the, the shot. I've got really nice spin. There's a building in the background, it's in focus. And I've got this foreground, it's totally super smooth. You can see the line there and there, and you also get some of the motion lines on that side. And then I can pick up some of this, which to me is even cleaner, and then drop that into that other shot because it's a little bit you know, fuzzy there. So now that I've brought the car all the way up, I want to try and get some light on this side. And if I can't do it with the particular angle I'm at because we don't have much room, I'll probably do it with the exposure, just kind of bring the exposure up and lighten up that side. Is that the assignment? Go spend? The only thing I care about for this is literally just this side of the particular vehicle. So because it's sheet metal related, I'm gonna go back to my my original exposure. About 6,500 bucks. Now I, you know, if that was when I bought it, it could be different now. And there's also different uh, accessories and attachments of some been updated. I just don't. Um, they have to go out and get one of these for the assignment next week. <laughs> Split it, guys. <laughs> you know, six ways. <laughs> so basically, it's kind of a little bit now. So this was the door. See how much cleaner that is. So I got a really long one where I get, I get detail there, and I'll be able to lift that in post, but it's way better than there. So it gives me, and the idea behind this stuff is to basically get shape on everything, right? And to do it just enough to where it looks real, it doesn't look fake, it doesn't look like it was Photoshopped, but it enhances the design of the actual vehicle. Now, if we had all day, I would then do this side a little bit, but that actually looks really good. So then the other thing we can do is, I don't know if I have, I don't, if we, if we basically had some, white foam core. What do I always tell you guys? I have some, I have some <laughs> in my car. I have some yeah, people, yeah, so basically what <laughs> so I would do is, I. <laughs> I would then hit the badge. And shiny boards. Okay. The badge is probably the only thing to me that looks a little bit like it's lacking a little bit of luster in there. Like it's, it's they usually like this to be super clean. Like if it, like if it were up to them, they would, it would be, you know, just like this. Oh. Yeah, like, like <laughs> glowing, chrome glowing, like super lit. It's you know, an angel. Which is, which is what you want to do. You know, sometimes what they do is they'll even like, see this here 
they'll want to be able to see the Toyota on the badge on the wheel, even though it's spinning. So oh boy. what I'll take is sometimes is I'll even, you can, I'm just trying to see if you can see it in any of these. You can't in the first one that we did. Here this. Some of the other pieces. But it gives you an idea. Like, I mean, I had a static version of it that I can drop in there. Yeah. Cause, and then sometimes, you know, they want to be able to see some of the spokes of the wheels because they want you to be able to see the design that, you know, sometimes they've, they've updated it or something like that. So you're... I've seen a lot of rolling shots they, like that. They, they want the car to look like it's doing like 100 miles an hour, but they want everything in detail, <laughs> sharp tack, you know. So you the wheel's can... only going five. Reality. Yeah, so it's, it's tough to find a happy, you know, to happy medium to where, you know, it's grounded in reality, it's stylized, it has a look, you've graded it the way you want it to look, and then also you've composited it you know, in a way that it looks like a, you know, a sexy shot. So any questions? I would have like a million questions. You don't have any questions. I say the same thing. I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess there's, I guess. So I have maybe, a question for you. So yeah. how, how many do you do car to car? Do you do, you know, how often is the rig? How often is car to car? So I would say the rig is kind of like a specialty thing. I don't use it as often just because, so the trend right now is is a lot of people, if, if you're not doing like full on ad shoots, where you're going out and you know, you'll know you have a guy to do a rig, uh, you'll have, I don't know, say four to 10 days to do an entire campaign or catalog. Um, you know, you might throw some rigs in there at sunrise or sunset, kind of close out your day. Uh, throw some car to car stuff in there. Um, lots of lifestyle, uh, hero shots. And kind of cover, you know, knocking out your details and your interiors um, at multiple locations. There's there's that end of, of the advertising right. stuff. Then you have kind of the the lower end, which I would say is more the uh, they're doing a commercial and someone's shooting stills off of that commercial. So what they'll do is they'll have more than one vehicle. You know, you'll be at a separate location or kind of the same place and just kind of trade spots. One person shooting one thing, the other shooting the other, or you're poaching off what the other what the motion team is capturing. Um, you know, you'll also have specialty stuff where they're launching a particular vehicle. Well, there, you, you won't do as many days. Maybe you might spend more days, more time on post. Um, and then, you know, it depends on what level of lifestyle they want there. Uh, you know, there's kind of a, there's always a trend. You guys got kind of always got to keep up with what's going on uh, in terms of like what people are focused on, what people are liking, what people are hiring. A lot of it, the, you know, right now they're kind of, people are kind of restricted because you can't really fly people in. There's, there's a risk involved, right? Everything is heavy COVID. Everybody gets tested the day before, if not the day of. And if somebody gets, you know, it's hard to invest in somebody to fly them from Europe over here to shoot something and then not you know, spend all this money and all this time and then not be able to, you know, have them shoot because they have COVID or something like that. So you, you know, get somebody local or someone that's been working a lot already that already has a setup and a system. So it's, it's been very, Focus. And I know it's it's really been you know hard for a lot of people to be able to get in front of a lot of new art producers and art buyers with new work because nobody's going to an office, right. nobody's taking portfolios, nobody's you know nobody's getting FaceTime with these people. It's really just whatever the Instagram algorithm thinks they deserve to see is what they get. So it's so you know that's kind of why I've gone the stream route, right? It gives people an opportunity to one see how I work. Three, it gives them intimate time with me to be able to ask me questions about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So I've kind of, in the last, I don't know, since the beginning of the year, gotten really deep in CGI. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've wanted to do that I haven't been able to do, you know, production-wise, just because it's it's unattainable. Um, and CG's kind of presented, it's kind of gotten that much more accessible, I would say, recently, in terms of, and then just the possibilities. You can mix CG with photography in ways that I don't think you could before. You know, I can use still backgrounds in CGI vehicles, or, like I did a shoot in Lancaster on Friday, and there weren't the level of poppies that we wanted in the actual shoot. So I'm thinking, see, you have the poppies in there. That's really easy to do. Um, you know, you can do that. You can do the rig stuff. You know, motion stuff is slightly easier. You know, there's so much more access to things like that. So with the streaming stuff, it gives them insight into what I'm doing. It gives them an opportunity to see what I've been working on. You know, I'll have a slideshow of the stuff that I've done on the screen while I'm have my work you know, workstation Photoshop open or, you know, browsing some stuff. Usually it's stuff that's already been published because I can't go through and work on things that are, I'm in the process of doing that aren't live yet because it becomes a, a legal issue and you'll never work again. Uh, you know, and then the other aspect of, of streaming is that they can go in and look at what I've done on their own time. So, 
it's three more ways to get access to me that they didn't have before. And then I don't have to push the stuff on them, I have to email blast them, I don't have to reach out to them on Instagram, you know, and bug them and be like, you know, funny, we both love bananas, you know, like how do you start a conversation with somebody over here like, you know, I wear thongs too, you know, you, there's nothing like, what are you going to say? Like, TMI, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but that's not the time you're saying stuff, you don't believe, you believe it because you're just way. trying to make conversation, make you know, a connection anyways. somehow. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden they've bit, you know, placed a judgment on you on the first four words you've said and there's nothing to do with your work or who you are or any of that stuff. So it's just it's just hard now and I I figure, you know, having been on Twitch and having seen the way streaming works and th there's not a lot of people that are doing automotive that are in there. Right. So in a market that isn't already oversaturated with a whole bunch of people, there's an opportunity. So dig deep, do what you can, be resourceful, educate people about the process. Let them know how you do what you do. You know, we're all photographers here. Everybody's good at something. Yeah. You know, hey, yeah don't don't be it. afraid to share. I mean, That's the other thing. Like you, you have, you have nothing to lose by putting yourself out there. Like, what are they going to do? Not hire me more? Like, I mean, right. If if you're not working, you you know, what else are you going to do? You know, I do the email blast. I do the social. I do the website. I do the, you know, the portfolio reviews. The you know, all that stuff where they like, you know, claim to get, give you access. And I've done those things and, and they're great. They give you an opportunity to get a name and an email and, and, a, and they get a FaceTime with you and, and they get to know you. But when you've spent four days meeting with 30 oh, yeah. people a day, Sean, who? Yeah. Oh, you did what? Like, so when I first started doing that stuff, I was crazy. I literally, I wore outfits. When I say outfits, like brightly colored patterned shirts <laughs> with brightly colored pants. I was in Palm Springs, right? I had a business card that said that guy on it. And behind that guy was the pattern of the shirt I was wearing. So that way, when I gave people my business card, they would be like, oh, and they would remember me instantly from the card. And then that way, when I sent out promos and emails after the portfolio reviews, I used the same pattern. So they would, like, I'm trying to, like, brand myself. So Sean, that literally was talked about in the graduation speech last term, like, almost identically to what you're saying. Our commencement speech was very much just be different like be fine in a business card just, just like what you did that's like, I, I didn't know that and the thing i did was that's super cool we had these portfolios in new york and what i decided to do was uh, a friend of mine was was in uh that show uh hell on, or hell on, hell, 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 well, i don't know it, it was a show about like an old western oh. it was ending on like showtime or something like that but one of the guys on the show was a friend of mine and so i was like let's so i created a story around who he was and his character there was the portfolio reviews. I used the uh, Hasselblad demo. I asked them like, hey, you know, can I do a shoot at your demo? Because they were already there with the camera and the light set up and they're like, sure. So I brought a makeup artist out and a stylist. We created a storyline about this guy who basically gets in a fight in a bar, goes out to, uh, or gets in a fight on the street, goes out to a bar, gets drunk, picks up, you know, one of the women in the, the, the movie and then goes home. So the, I did the shoot that everybody saw and then I invited everybody out to drinks to where they got to actually be a part of the imagery that I was shooting and then shared on their own social. So I gave them the hashtags and all this stuff. So it was a way to promote myself and what I was doing and a small concept of like, hey, if you guys did you were, were to do like a big advertising shoot and then bring your hardcore fans or niche bloggers or you know streamers or whoever to part of your production or your showcase, then they get to then advertise and promote and market for you as a way to like get hardcore people to be a part of the process of what was going on so that way it's not just like a, a one-off or you know things like that so it's a small scale proof of concept to where like hey you can actually be a part of what's going on and not just do everything kind of the way that it's already been done everybody thought it was crazy and the next thing you know we just did that on the music video last weekend people are doing that yeah yeah exactly. you never know you just well, yeah keep trying stuff and most people that are doing stuff that are famous now will tell you, you know, half of it, if not more than it, is hard work, and the other yeah. half is just being the right people at the right time. Building your network too. Yeah, yeah. and Building maximizing. Your That's how you build your network. Yeah. Because your so. network will help you. All how long. often are you on a job slash working on a job? Like, could it be seven days a week if you wanted it to? It's see, one or two is a, it's a freelance is completely different. Like, you can you can literally when it's raining is boring. Like, you're yeah. busy, you're up to your ears. Like, we shot what was it? We shot Friday. Uh, we did two shoots uh, yesterday. Uh, and it's just been kind of like one, like yeah. every other week type of thing. Uh, you know, but there'll, there'll be times where there's nothing, and there's times where it's like, you know, back to back to back. So it, it dries up like there's not much. 
it ebbs and flows. It kind of starts to drive around July, I would say. It's kind of July, Sometimes, October. Yeah, but then the next July, you'll be busy, the busiest time you've ever had. So it, there's it no rhyme or reason. Everybody was dead to the pandemic. Right. And I, right. I got the, the Nike split screen campaign. I did all the compositing for that. Um, and then I launched the 2022 Kia Telluride Black edition, or uh, Nightfall edition. So, you know, we, and we literally were one of the first people out shooting. The lockdown was in March and we shot at Moab in, in May. And we literally had, and we were like, all right, we'll use this as an example of how to show everybody how easy how it is to it. shoot. Yeah. I mean, we literally had people out there with uh, UV lights, like flashing the inside of the vehicles that we were doing. You know, we, I mean, we had medics, we had testing, we had literally everything that you could possibly do to show people like, hey, you can still shoot you with all this protocol. stuff going right. yeah. So it's, it's communicating to people how rather than why not. Right. Well, I think it's also like you're showing them instead of just telling them. That's True. a big thing that's, too. That's the big part. People like doers rather than yeah, talkers. Yeah, talkers and, and instead of just sitting there going, "Well, I can't shoot." Yeah, yeah. yeah. you demonstrated that. Yeah. There's a, like there's your a, COVID there's series. Closing that was insane. It's 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 a big part of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, any other anybody? Questions? Anybody? Anybody? Really? Oh, oh, God, you got me excited. He put oh, stand up, it's just a fly. Dude. Oh, well, <laughs> dude. dude. <laughs> <laughs> can't even think of a question right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Motion? Uh, we'll go with CGI or... Is it motion stuff? Yeah. Uh, Which one takes more time or cost? It depends. I mean, CGI is right, right now. I mean, you're looking at it. Like, it depends on the level of like what the motion is that you're doing. I mean, I know a guy who's done some of the new Hummer stuff. Uh, where that stuff with the new Hummer. So a lot of times it, doing things is based on access to vehicle. If a vehicle isn't made yet and you want to market it, you have to do a CG. So, uh, you know, and then there's times where, you know, we've got like a one-off Cadillac Lyric and we're shooting it, we'll do a motion with it, but we're kind of restricted because it's only one of a kind. So, you know, we can't mount stuff to the vehicle, we can't, you know, take it to crazy places. And that's the other thing, you know, it's sometimes stuff's code black, so you literally, stuff's code black, they can't, nobody can see the vehicle at all. So you have to be in places or shoot things, you know, where nobody can talk about it. Like there's even code names for what it is that you're working on that you don't even know. Yep. Like sometimes you won't even know what you're shooting until you actually are almost yeah. there. So You have security to hold nine yards. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then there's insurance on the security, yep. like firms get hired, like you gotta have all that stuff in your in your yep. bid. Yeah. There's a whole, there's a whole protocol level. for it all. Yeah. Exactly. Then if you don't if you can't like mount the rig to the car then how do you do the shop then? So uh then you'll just shoot it on sticks. So like if, if I had done this with, if I had to do this without the rig on it, I would have shot the car by itself, would have lit it, right? Would have, uh, would have done foam core, reflectors on all sides, hit the wheels, um, then jack the car up, spun the wheels, doing long exposures, then take the vehicle out and then shoot the background as it's not moving the camera at all throughout any of this stuff. Oh. oh. Okay. So, and then what we do is then in post, Motionize the background, you know, drop into spinning wheels, and then use all the sheet metal that you want. And then sometimes what I would do is just kind of add motion because, as you see, like the way that the the vehicle looks here to static compared to how it would be, you know, in motion. See how you get all these really nice blurs and everything. Like everything becomes really soft, but the edges are really hard. So I'll sometimes I'll mask out each each panel and then motion blur it the way that I want it to be. So uh, I think it's called Virtual Rig. Yeah, Virtual Rig is the program where basically like you can then motionize every single thing in the direction that you want it to be motioned. And you have full control over every way that you're, every which way that you're going um, with what you're doing uh, in terms of post in that direction. Remember I, I told you guys how you shoot a static all the time? Mm -hmm. Just so, so you have your base covered. Yep. Because you can pick up a piece like you can. Like let's say everything's great, but this headlight's just a little bit out. You can just drop that headlight in. Now everything looks sharp just because one thing is sharp. So that's, yeah, that's the other thing, like with the stuff where I'm really short on time, it's like, I just need safeties to be able to cover myself. Yeah. So that way if something does happen, I'm, you know, I have something to show. Cause the last thing you want is to have absolutely nothing. Yeah. Cause then you notice the guy who has nothing and then who wants to hire the guy who has nothing. When there's everybody out there that has something. Yeah. So it's, you want to give them reasons to, not reasons not to.
shit's always gonna happen. You have every and, excuse and, in the world. Exactly, and shit will always happen. Yeah. It, it, that's it how is. you react to it. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's not making a big deal about yep. it, solving the problem without the client ever knowing. Yep. You know, like the crane on the Toyota set that was not your problem. That was the production's problem. The, when they were trying to lower the, the they hadn't actors. tested the actors to see if the passing over of the lines, and then they couldn't even use yeah. the crane. So we were on, we were on a motion. We were shooting stills on a motion, and they part of it was the. the uh, Hip hop dancers, and one of the things were the back lid of the car opened up, and the, and the, and the dancers leaned back. That was their hero shot. They're, They're suspended, rigging. like, whoop, and, and then they come back. The rigging guys had shown every video in the world of how that they had done this before. Like, they literally like lowered a Jacula into uh, and into the ground, and then had to, had him come back up, and like nothing had happened. But leading dancers back, and they haven't come up. They just couldn't get the ca the cables placed in the right spot to be able to get the actors to do that, and it wasn't working. Like, we had spent like three hours on it, and finally it was just like. Epic. So people got behind him and they just dressed in green. Oh, the dress in green. Just lean yeah. back and then, then you're done. So and then like, production had to pay for whatever how expensive that crane was, but they played it off like, oh no, we're still using it. So you just gotta cover your bases. It's like it's stuff always goes wrong. Yeah, guaranteed. Any other questions? I tell you. You got any <laughs> questions from here? Huh? From Twitch. <laughs> oh yeah! Hey, hi Twitch people. <laughs> is it still streaming? It is. Alright, cool. Yeah. Well, I think we can wrap it up. All right. Um, I'm gonna. How do we? I'll let stream? you do that, man.